Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To at VSpinMaster on Twitter. Hope you guys are hanging in there very well this week. Uh, maybe a short week for some of you. And I wanted to come to you guys with uh, just a quick video that I hope uh, many will find interesting, uh, especially if you are um, in the market for entering into the home lab um, environment configuration. So many blog posts out there about the benefits of home labs, and I wanted to share my opinions, um, uh, which hopefully you will, you will find valuable um, for your own learning and home lab uh, environment configuration. Home labs, why do you need one? Well, in my opinion, home labs are an excellent opportunity to extend your learning experience. Uh, for most of us, if you work for a company, you most likely have access, of course, to production environments uh, and maybe even your own lab environment in the workplace. So why would you want to bring that to your home environment? Well, I'd, I'm trying to remember, I think it was around six, seven years ago when I delved into the home lab environment. May may have even been uh, longer than that now, seven, eight years ago. Um, I started out very small, um, but I personally wanted to uh, extend my learning experience uh, with many different technologies, products that in a way that I could not do in the production environments that I had access to. And if you experience many of the same things that I do, even with a work lab environment, uh, those lab environments sometimes become uh, quote unquote production environments, even though they are a lab environment, uh, there may be business critical tasks or development processes or other things that may uh, start to rely on those lab environments. So it's a little bit more difficult to just do anything you want in a, um, a proper uh, employee sanctioned or a work sanctioned uh, lab environment. So bringing a lab environment into your home is a, uh, uh, it provides a flexibility. It allows uh, the learning to continue in a way that you have control over. If you break something, it doesn't take down production by any stretch. Now, I'm going to talk about a few things that um, <laughs> it seems like production can, uh, that production mentality uh, can creep into your lab environment as well because as you start to heavily learn and utilize with uh, utilize your lab environment, it's easy to have those uh, become a production environment for you personally. So, uh, but let's start out at the top. Uh, start out uh, small with your home lab environment to begin with. Uh, that's my first recommendation. Uh, I tell you, I started out uh, my. I'm looking at uh, my vSphere environment currently. And uh, right now I've got three clusters, five hosts, uh, 109 virtual machines. Now, uh, one of the things I want to note here, uh, I started out with a single host, and that host was nothing more than a uh, Dell workstation that had VMware workstation loaded on it. And from that point, uh, I started spinning up uh virtual machines inside of VMware Workstation, which worked very well uh, at the scale that I wanted to uh, begin with. So I encourage you to just start small. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy a server rack and, you know, have five or ten hosts in your, uh, in your environment and 10 gig uh, network connectivity. All of those things are very, very great and, and fun. Um, but it's it doesn't have to begin that way. Uh, that's that's the first tip from my perspective. Just sharing my experience with you. Start out small. Get you a workstation. Uh, load VMware workstation. Once you're comfortable with that, or need additional flexibility or learning with uh, something like vSphere, uh, as you see on the screen, 
um, then consider uh, loading a bare metal hypervisor, ESXi, uh, Hyper-V, uh, those uh, type one hypervisors that uh, sit on top of your bare metal. They give you the best performance, best learning experience because that's most likely what you will see in production uh, environments. Uh, number two I want to uh, talk about is to invest in good equipment. You know, I start, uh, it, it may sound like we're, uh, you know, f switching gears or flipping what we just said uh, to start small. However, I will say this, if you are serious about a home lab environment, yes, do start small. But if you plan on investing in uh, your home lab for the learning advantages that it brings, be sure to invest in good equipment. I tell you, from my experience, I would rather pay 25% uh, more for a piece of good equipment than pay that 25% less for that cheaper piece of equipment because normally in the home lab you get what you pay for. So you buy the cheaper equipment, it either is going to fail or the reliability is not going to be uh, what you would expect. And the last thing you want in your learning environment is to be troubleshooting hardware issues. Uh, now, yes, there is advantages to uh, tweaking your troubleshooting skills from that perspective. However, uh, from, for my purposes, the home lab is more for a software perspective, uh, learning how uh, you know, modern DevOps uh, technologies, uh, hybrid environments, configurations. I'm not really keen on wanting to troubleshoot a RAM issue or you know, some other kind of peripheral uh, issue with a uh, home lab environment. So I prefer super micro equipment. Uh, that's what I have natively chosen for the home lab environment and stuck with, and it has served me very well. Uh, I've not had a single issue outside of a couple of uh, bad SD cards or uh, USB drives that I was booting from um, previously. Uh, but other than that, for the hardware itself, I have not had a single issue with, with any of the hosts uh, in the environment. Uh, number three, I will say uh, that is, I think one of the best investments that you can make in the home lab environment is a VMUG subscription. If you're going down the route of vSphere uh, VMware products uh, in general, you cannot beat the VMUG subscription. Now, once you uh, achieve certain levels of learning and uh, community achievement, uh, community contribution, um, definitely go for uh, the V expert uh, designation. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, community of, of experts, technical experts, uh, and it's not a certification as such. It is more uh, community involvement, uh, evangelization of uh, VMware products and their use and showing how you can get value from those. But it's a wonderful program, definitely something to reach out for as a goal. Uh, but VMUG, and I continually keep a VMUG subscription because I, I think the value that it offers is tremendous. Uh, for a couple of hundred dollars, you can have access to essentially the full suite of VMware products. We're talking vSphere, vCenter, ESXi, uh, NSX, vSAN, uh, vRealize uh, Operations, vRealize uh, Network Insight. Uh, the list goes on and on. So tons of products, tons of value. Uh, so definitely use that uh, as uh, part of your investment in your home lab. It's the best $200 you will spend for your learning. Uh, Going along with that, if you're looking for Microsoft uh, licensing, uh, the uh, Microsoft Evaluation Center is one of the best uh, tools that you can use for your learning. Um, now, if you have a uh, Visual Studio subscription, that is wonderful. Uh, and that is probably the next uh, best, or it's probably the best, not next best 
the best resource for licensing from a Microsoft perspective. However, it's expensive. So use the evaluation center for your um, evaluation licensing. Uh, for the most part in the home lab, you're going to be building, tearing down. So a lot of the resources that you're going to spin up in your lab are going to be uh, dynamic. They're ephemeral. You can spin them up, you tear them down. You don't need a two year license for your Windows server. Uh, so definitely make use of this evaluation center uh, for your learning purposes for licensing. And finally, uh, one thing I want to say is do back up your lab. Now, again, it, you know, it seems uh, counterintuitive. We're saying that uh, the home lab environment is built to destroy, basically. We're, we're in there. It's ephemeral. We're wanting to uh, build up, tear down resources. However, what we want to say about this is there are core, and you will find this, there are core parts of your lab, I will say, core resources, maybe virtual machines uh, that you want to protect. Because I tell you, there's nothing more uh, frustrating than spending four hours building up your, your core infrastructure, maybe domain controller, your DHCP server, uh, MDT, uh, building up templates to deploy only to suffer the loss of a data store and lose everything. And all of that work is down the drain quickly. So make uh, take advantage also, I, I tell you, their um, Veeam and other uh, data protection companies offer what they refer to as an NFR key. Now, I when I first was getting into the home lab, I saw mention of this NFR uh, entity and I was like, what is an NFR? But so it's not for resale license. So a lot of the vendors will offer an NFR key uh, for the purposes. If you are a a blogger, a, a tech evangelist, or you know contributing to the community in some way, they offer the NFR keys uh, as a great resource uh, to uh, contribute to learning. And, and, and it's twofold. They receive advantages from that. Don't let, don't let them fool you uh, because, yes, they are giving you software. However, you are becoming proficient in that software. And most likely, the more engineers that are sufficient or proficient, I should say, in the software, they will evangelize that software. They will recommend that software. And... Uh, clients that uh, or employers that they work for, they're going to be recommending that software. So it's it's a it's a twofold uh, benefit here, both for the company that's offering the NFR key as well as you uh, learning the software, having access. Now, what an NFR key typically is is normally a year long license. Uh, and a lot of the manufacturers will, it, the NFR key will come across as like a trial license that is uh, fully available, uh, fully f uh, featured, but it lasts for 365 days. So that's what you will find with the NFR keys. So, but it's a great resource. And I would highly recommend that you look at spinning up an NFR key for a data protection solution of your choice that allows you to back up the core infrastructure. Now, if you've got 100 VMs, a lot of the NFR keys are limited with the number of instances, such as what Veeam offers, uh, and others are the same way. Uh, however, most likely, it's not the 100 VMs, again, that you want to protect. It's that core five or six VMs that you uh, do not want to lose. So just uh, hopefully these uh, four or five tips that we've went over in this video are, are helpful. I think the home lab is a great resource for learning. Uh, it allows you to get your uh, hands dirty, so to speak, uh, with uh, learning technologies, evangelizing technologies, uh, improving your skill set as an engineer. Um, so uh, once again, a Brandon Lee virtualization how-to. Uh, Visit the website, uh, post content uh, continuously there, normally daily. Uh, also, um, the YouTube channel that you're uh, hopefully watching now, uh, posting 
as frequent of content as I can there as well. Uh, and fo- you can follow me on Twitter as well as um, uh, other areas, uh, LinkedIn, but Twitter is at V Spin uh, V Spin Master uh, on Twitter. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the video and uh, check back often, subscribe, hit like on the video, and uh, I will see you guys soon.